It is a beautiful Monday at my little lake. Uh, I don't usually get to come here on Monday, so this is a treat. Um, today we're going to do the much requested 10 more tips for sea kayakers. Stick around. So Johnny, guess what we're talking about today? What? I'm gonna need this footage. Okay. Guess what we're talking about today? What? Today, we're doing the highly requested 10 more tips for kayaking, specifically sea kayaking. Isn't that exciting? That is exciting. You don't seem very excited. I, this is the thing. That's it, that's, that's as excited gets. Yes. You know what would make me smile? <laughs> getting your skirt if on. I can get my skirt on something I have not adjusted to is how much less aggressive this cockpit combing is I whispered and it freaking it got never it. hears that well huh. having two GoPros that are voice activated I mean you're 25 feet from me and it heard me whispering there are absolutely days where it doesn't hear anything you have to yell at it I also instinctively lean in when I'm talking to the GoPro. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna talk about today, the first tip is uh, risk awareness. So we don't talk a lot about risk in kayaking, but we kind of need to talk about it a little bit more. Kayaking is not particularly dangerous. Uh, partic sea kayaking is not particularly dangerous. Whitewater is always is a whole other thing. Um, but when kayaking goes bad, it goes very bad. Um, it, it ramps up very quickly. Um, and risk adversity or risk awareness is super important. Um, your tolerance for risk increases as you develop more experience. So in the beginning, uh, paddling as we are now, which Johnny and I just commented that we're going the wrong direction because we're starting our paddle into the wind or with the wind, so we will be fighting it back. Um, and we made the decision super quickly. I said, do you wanna turn around? So we're paddling uh, into the wind to start and it's pushing us back uh, to come back. Uh, do you wanna turn around so that we're doing it the way that we're supposed to be doing it? And he said, no, it's really light, we can handle it. That right there is, is looking at risk factors and making a decision based on the factors and your ability to deal with those risk factors. So Johnny and I are both very comfortable paddling in wind. Um, as you can see in a video up here, which is probably two years ago, Johnny asked to go specifically paddling in high wind to get that experience level. So we're super comfortable paddling in wind. This is a relatively light breeze. I was half joking when I said, do you want to turn around? But you have to go through that decision-making process to get a feel for uh, how, how much risk you are comfortable handling. And if you're paddling with people and you are not comfortable with the risk, the level of risk, you need to talk to the people you're paddling with and make changes until you are comfortable with that level of risk, or you need to not paddle, but you need to voice those fears. So um, in dealing with risk, you need to sort of get a feel for your level of comfort at different levels of risk, and you need to communicate that risk comfort level with the people you're paddling with. Sound good? Sounds good. Okay. Okay, allow yourself a little luxury. I, when I'm doing big trips, I pack in uh, whiskey in an Alpine bottle and an actual glass rocks glass. That's one of my little luxury items. And let me tell you, there is nothing better than grabbing some glacial ice as you're paddling into a beach and having, when you're done setting up camp, a whiskey with thousand year old ice in it. All right, it's exactly, this tastes exactly the same as a whiskey on the rocks with not thousand year old ice, but hey, it's cool. It's thousand year old ice, it's super cool. Um, I packed in pillows a million years ago and everyone made fun of me and now everyone packs in a pillow. Johnny, do you have uh, uh, luxury things that you bring on trips that you really like? Oh, the inflatable pillow. The inflatable sure. pillow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's it. Well, I always take whiskey. Always take, but do you bring a rocks glass or do you bring like? I, I do not. Yeah, uh, I pack actual glass. Yeah. I mean, I'm super careful with it. I pack it really well, but so allow yourself that sort of a little luxury. And that's the beauty of, of sea kayaking and kayak touring is the boats are big enough that you've got space for that stuff. If it fits through the hatch, it can go. So a little luxury is a nice thing. Big cozy sleeping bag, pillow, your pajamas. 
I guess that's it. This partners a little bit with the risk thing, which is if you think you're gonna need it, it needs to be reachable. And the more important it is, the closer it needs to be to you. So obviously I have a knife here inside this pocket. I have a whistle. I have on big trips, a compass, uh, power food, things like that. This pocket can get in the way a little bit, but for the most part, it's pretty good. Um, inside the cockpit, I will have water. Uh, I'll have my VHF radio. I'll have a first aid kit at my feet so that I don't, I'm not going to need it a lot throughout the day, but if I need it, it's there and I can get to it. Um, now that I have a boat with a day hatch in front of me, I have to figure out what's going to live in there, but that's a good place for sunscreen, things like that. Not necessarily an emergency item, but easy to get to. Uh, and then even frequently under hatch covers, I will put stuff that I might need access to. So frequently food and stove and pots and pans are right under hatch covers. I have done trips where we stopped halfway through uh, the evening to stop, make dinner with the plan of getting back in the boats to keep paddling. First dinner? Uh-huh. Show me first dinner. First Ooh. dinner. Uh, so if you need it, it's gotta be reachable. I think this wind is worse than we think it is, and I think we're gonna be slogging back. It'll be a good workout. It will be a good workout. Because we are taking it easy right now. We are, and that's what made me think of it, is I'm barely paddling and looking at the land. We're moving pretty quick. It's <laughs> picked up. Okay, next I wanna talk about cars on roof racks. So the first thing is, uh, if you're putting your car, your cars on roof racks, did I say cars and roof racks? Next, I want to talk about kayaks and roof racks. If you are getting on a highway with your boat in a roof rack, don't do the bow and stern lines to the grab handles. It'll put a tremendous amount of wear and tear on those shortening their life. What works really well is a climbing sling wrapped around the boat with just a simple slip knot, and that's what you're pulling down to the car with. Um, that way also it's holding onto the whole boat and it's holding onto the boat in a thicker point instead of right at the tip. Um, and that works really nicely. Um, so it lessens the amount of wear and tear on those handles. And at some point we'll do a video to talk about what those handles are really for. They're not, believe it or not, for lifting your kayak, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, the other part of this, this is two tips in one, both about roof racks. If you have, if you're in a car and you have cradles on one side of your car, consider putting them on the passenger side so that if you are ever parked on the side of the road and unloading your kayak, you're not doing it standing in the street. Far safer, you can take your time tying it up and things like that, and you don't have to worry about a car coming by and taking your door off or taking you off. So that's two tips about car racks. Let's go through here and make a right and see what that's looking like today. What bird was that, Johnny? Do not know. You're supposed to make it up. Next tip. Charts and maps are awesome. Spend time with them, get to know them. Even if you're not doing big trips, it's good to have a chart in front of you and see what's going on. Um, and a lot of charts are available for free as a download uh, from the NOAA and the, I forget where, I'll put it in here. Um, and there is also a thing, big, you know, charts generally are pretty big, don't work too well on the deck of a kayak, but there is also a thing called booklet charts. And booklet charts are the same big charts cut into eight and a half by 11 pieces and you can print them out on waterproof paper and have them right here in front of you it works really well um, so paddle with charts is a really good way to get a feel for navigation uh, and the more you do it the easier it gets so work on that that's a good one the next tip the best paddle clothing is not necessarily paddle clothing and so with the exception of my dry suit, the clothes that I paddle in are not designed for paddling. I used to use an expensive paddling jacket before I would use a dry suit and they just, they don't breathe well uh, and they're hard to work with. Johnny, what's that white guy over there? Egret. I don't usually see them up in trees. So I got, a, I got rid of the paddling jacket. I actually think I gave it away to someone. And um, 
Now I just use a rain shell jacket as my paddling jacket, and the one thing I miss is waterproof cuffs. That would be nice. Um, but the rest of my paddling gear are quick dry tops, hats, things like that that are not paddle specific. So you probably already have most of the gear that you need to go paddle all winter. Um, you know, with the exception maybe a dry suit or a wet suit if you choose to go that route. Which brings me to my next tip, which is do not stop paddling when it gets cold out. Um, the beauty of paddling in the winter is that it is quiet. It is getting very shallow here. Uh, is that it is quiet, no one is out, it is absolutely beautiful. I am still working on the goal of paddling and falling snow, which I have not been able to make happen here in uh, North Carolina. And so that's why I'm relocating, just so that I can paddle and falling snow. Um, but it is an amazing time to go paddling. So, so paddle in winter, it is totally worth it. We were actually last winter back here in the same spot and it was frozen over. Yep. Was that last winter or two winters ago? Last winter. Last winter. Paddle in the winter. It is so worth it. Think I can get through here? Yep. Next tip, sit up straight. The vast majority of the free paddle stroke assessments that I do, and you can do that too, you can send me video of yourself paddling and I'll send you back an assessment to tell you what to work on. The vast majority of them, people are either leaning too far back or too far forward. You should be sitting, your head and shoulders should be right over your hip bones. Um, kayaking will teach you good posture. So sit up straight, super, super important. Paddle to the island, take one last break on this side of it out of the wind, uh, and then head out from there. Sound good? Sounds good. Not a tip, but have a plan when you're dealing with weather, even if you're not dealing with weather, have a plan. That's in some book. Have a plan. No, it's that's that's oh, that's another thing from the tip list that I'm not actually talking about in this video. Is, oh, bonus tip. Have a plan. Stick to that plan. Know when to throw the plan out the window. There's your bonus tip. Okay, the last tip, and I think the most important, is make time to get on the water alone just to work on skills. So something that I used to do all the time was once a week, have 45 minutes on the water, hit the water with a list of things that I'm going to work on. Hey, this week I'm going to work on forward stroke and turning strokes and brace strokes. Um, and then the following week I'm going to work on rolling and brace strokes and bow rudder strokes, whatever it may be. That way you're constantly building skills, getting good practice as opposed to just sort of floating and enjoying the weather, which there's nothing really wrong with floating and enjoying the weather, but take some time to work on skills. Always be growing, always be building. That is the last tip for this week. Brett, where can we go to see an example of a lot of these strokes? I don't know. If only there was a YouTube channel. There are videos, there's actually down in the bottom is, uh, is it on the bottom? I forget where it is. There's a playlist of uh, called Sea Kayak Masterclass. And it's all the strokes and all the tips and all that stuff is right there on my channel. Um, you can also reach out to me uh, for video stroke analysis or a free discovery call to help figure out next trips and things like that. The wind is building nicely, did you feel that? Uh, this is what you got for paddling with the wind the first half of the day. Um, if this video worked out well for you, hit like, hit subscribe. I guess other than that, I'll see you outside. I have to shoot that someplace else so I can put my hand over it.
GoPro, stop recording.